Hello, my name is Batista Cavodi. I'd like to welcome you guys to my channel. Today, we're going to talk about West Coast Avengers. We're going to cover issues 25 to 32. All have been written by Steve Englehart and art by Al Milgram. And up until this point, I really love this series. It was it's it's super crazy from issue one up until this point. And the sad thing is, right around this time, we're going to start getting some fill-in issues, some good fill-in issues, and some terrible fill-in issues. And um, we also have one pretty interesting story arc where we have the West Coast Avengers having to deal with the Zodiac, this team of um, astrologically inspired supervillains. Actually, there's two Zodiac teams, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So first, let's start off with issue number 25, where we have Wonder Man having to face off against Abomination. But it's not actually Abomination. It's another Hulk villain called Tyrannus, I think his name is. He's possessed um, Abomination's body. And for super villain reasons and logic, he attacks Wonder Man on live television. They duke it out. They pretty much destroy the whole studio. The funny thing about this particular issue is that uh, at the end of the story, where Wonder Man defeats Abomination, people think it's a publicity stunt that Wonder Man did this to um, get some more free press and hype for his movie he was, that he was filming because he's an actor and stuff like that. And um, so Wonder Man's like, hey, guys, did you film the battle? How I stopped this villain? He says, no, look, people, you can go so far for <laughs> trying to get free press and stuff like that. And Wonder Man's like, no, no, this was the real deal. This actually really happened. So that was sort of like a funny twist on that particular story. And also, I forgot to mention, there's a little part where we have Moon Knight sort of having to adjust to be working on a team. So he goes off and does his solo stuff in in. He just doesn't want to renounce that aspect of his uh, persona. He wants to be a lone superhero and do his stuff during the night. So we see that sort of that interesting aspect of Moon Knight being a loner on this particular team. We have the Zodiac story arc. So we have the first Zodiac lineup. Leader of this team, Scorpio, was actually the um, brother of Nick Fury. So these guys sort of tie into the S.H.I.E.L.D. and Nick Fury mythos of the Marvel Universe where seemingly he had committed suicide. Now we have another Zodiac team pop up which it's discovered that they're actually life model decoys. They're not real humans. But they're competing with the with the original Zodiacs. And what happens in this story is that the new Zodiac team attack and obliterate <laughs> the old one. The only one that's able to survive and escape from this attack is Taurus. He's able to escape and seek help from the Avengers. <laughs> it's sort of funny. We have Iron Man and Pym going back to their headquarters. Taurus has this really weird looking gun, gun that has a star on, the <laughs> on it. It just looks, it just, it just doesn't work for me. At least the design of that particular gun. First dude tells the Avengers, like, we have to deal with this uh, predicament. These new Zodiac guys are bad news. And um, I couldn't help to remember back in the day, back in the 80s, like, astrology was a big deal. And it sort of is a big part of the story because they use astrology to try to figure out where the new Zodiac team is going to attack. Because... The Zodiac teams in general sort of try to become like these big major crime syndicates and want to take over things that way. So using astrology, they're trying to see where they're going to make the next move. And there's like this really weird line between uh, Taurus and Moon Knight because the the moon's over that, that particular sign. So it means that he's going to be probably telling the truth. It's so weird, but it just really brought back those memories of that how astrology back in the late mid to late 80s, it was like a real big thing, guys. Like a lot of people were into that stuff. At least, I was going to say stupid stuff, but yeah, it, it's pretty stupid. <laughs> they nail it. They got it right. They find where the new Zodiac team is doing their next hit. The Avengers battle the second Zodiac lineup. This actually, uh, I just, this is hilarious. 
because it, back um, this auction where they're selling off livestock, livestock and stuff like that. So you see all these bulls running in this one with this tongue hanging. I was just, at least for me, I always, I just laughed my ass off when I saw that. During this battle, Sagittarius gets killed, even though he's in the LMD, so he's not killed, but sort of weird. The idea is to create a new Sagittarius, and this guy is going to look just like Hawkeye because they're going to use this guy to infiltrate and take down the West Coast Avengers once and for all. So the new Zodiacs attack and capture Hawkeye. A little bit more about the origins of the Scorp uh, Scorpion Keem this weapon that Scorpio uses that's actually created in another dimension by this weird cult that live, feed off conflict and um, the basic idea is the key is here on Earth so it can cause as much chaos and destruction as possible so these guys can feed off it and that the LMD of Scorpio actually has the soul of this the Jake Fury that committed suicide is actually in this LMD, it's sort of complicated. We have Tigress. She starts seems to start want to start a relationship with um, with Moon Knight. She realizes that the Hawkeye that's at the base now isn't the real deal. So we have a brief battle between both of them. In issue twenty eight, we have the West Coast Avengers again able to foil the Zodiac, the new Zodiacs. Uh, heist here they end up battling uh, these guys in the desert but what happens is they get teleported away to the native dimension of where these cult guys came from where the, originally the key is from the thing that happens when they arrive to this dimension all the zodiac LMDs they die on the spot they can't live in this dimension and the west coast avengers have to deal with these cult guys the original recipe Hawkeye is here also, Tiger, because uh, I forgot to mention that Tiger was also a secret agent. She was the new Leo. Also had infiltrated the West Coast Avengers. And the really cool thing is, while this went down, uh, Taurus makes a run for it. He's able to escape. He wants to create a, a third iteration of the Zodiac. He wants to recruit Shroud. This doesn't work, but we get a really kick-ass battle between Moon Knight against Taurus in this battle, this issue is like issue number 29. It's fantastic, it's a real blast. It really shows how much a badass uh, Moon Knight is against this villain. So, in the first confrontation, Taurus realizes he can't defeat Moon Knight. He starts to go on the run. He's he, he like he's in a real desperate situation. He can't seem to shake Moon Knight off his tail. And it's really cool because during this whole battle, Moon Knight doesn't talk to at any moment and this just really freaks out Taurus. Taurus is able to get on on um on a plane. Moon Knight's there, obviously they start battling. He throws him off the plane, but Moon Knight's grabbing the wing and just lets go of the wing at the right moment, stabilizing the plane, sending the plane to its end. Uh because he shot through the roof too. I guess that's enough to send <laughs> a plane flying down and crashing. But he gets killed. Moon Knight survives. He's rescued, actually, by the other West Coast Avengers. And we sort of have a debate, like, should Avengers be able to kill? Um, and why did he wing it solo in that whole situation? The whole debate within the Avengers that Avengers don't kill. Kimber's still dealing with her secret that she killed the Ghost Rider when she was trapped in the past. Issue number 30 is a shameless filler issue. Because sometimes, again, as I said many times, sometimes... Filler issues are pretty fun. Um, they give sometimes the series just a little room to breathe and get you ready for the next story arc. And sometimes they just really suck. This is one of the terrible ones. I remember started reading this last week and I just started skimming through the pages. I just thought it was just a dumb story with this weird alien that kidnaps, uh, I think it's Wonder Man, and they have to deal with this guy battling. It's just a pretty unconsequential story in general. 31 is actually pretty good uh, where we have Ghost Rider, he's back we have Texas Twister he's trying to invoke and try to get his girlfriend back from he thinks he's trapped in hell she was replaced with a demon we saw earlier in the series 
And um, so he's trying to invoke her using magic. And they accidentally bring Archon to Earth, who is like, he's just such a stupid character in his whole backstory. But it, like stupid in a good way, because I always see him. I always get a good chuckle. He's, he's, like, he's like the poor man's Thor. So Archon has arrived. He has some beef, especially with Wonder Man. So Ghost Rider seizes this opportunity to go send Archon against the Avengers. We get a pretty entertaining battle because Wonder Man's fighting against Archon and the rest of the Avengers are just watching. It's like, oh, go. <laughs> watching these two guys duke it out. But the good thing about the story is that Mockingbird is confronted by Ghost Rider, who is actually the great-great-grandson of the Ghost Rider that she killed. Because she drugged and raped her. And so they're fighting. And um, almost she's, she falls off a cliff. She's, she's holding on for her life. Ghost Rider's taunting her. She's almost killed. She barely survives this whole, whole ordeal. Um, and then we have the Avengers say, Hey, you didn't see the great battle. How Archon got his butt kicked. And it's like, you, what, would you, what were you busy with? It's like she was almost got killed and she can't say anything because she's hiding the secret that the, with the whole deal with the Ghost Rider. So it's like a pretty funny ending to the story. And then we get this really weird story where Mockingbird tries to hunt down the last remaining members of Ghost Rider's family to discover who's this guy, this new Ghost Rider from the present day. So they go to the Grand Canyon. To distract her teammates, she awakens this monster called Yetigar <laughs> and so she can slip away and confront this guy who is um, Ghost Rider's great great grandson so that's like a sort of really dangerous thing to do for Mockingbird <laughs> so while the, her teammates are battling this guy uh, Mockingbird confronts this, um, this this guy that she's she discovered thanks to investigation starts beating the crap out of her uh, crap out of him Moon Knight stops him her at the last moment begs for forgiveness it's like hey <laughs> this is a an avengers mistake don't call the authorities while the other avengers defeat yet guard but at the end of the story we discovered that this guy was actually the real ghost rider she's like trying to destabilize mockingbird's mind really fucking with her so these are the issues 35 35 no 25 to 32 if you're west coast here it's, it's a little bit of a weaker delivery but the series after this the series is going to still run strong so hope you like this video see you guys next time